This video is sponsored by madhoney.net. The answer to the mystery of life. Well, the weird thing about taking that position is that you can fall into positions where you find it, where you find the answer. And I sort of feel like that's the situation that the deep plant psychedelic community is in. It's a sense of having found the answer. And now the task changes. It's a completely different kind of spiritual universe that you live in after you've found the answer. Because the task becomes facing the answer. Facing it. You now have it. It's no more about disciplining the passions and, and all the. No, no. It's now been handed over. And so what are you going to do with it? And this, this is, uh, to my mind, in a way, uh, the, the problem and the challenge that we face globally as a species. You know, if the holy grail of the Western mind was the ability to release energy and form matter and to control nature, then this is now achieved. The goal, so now the whole context of the problem changes. And the problem becomes changing our own minds, controlling the hand that controls the energy. And this is an entirely different kind of problem. It is not to be solved with the analytical knife plunged again and again into the body of nature. That whole approach is uh, seen to be uh, at best passé, at worst bankrupt. So instead, it's about trying to edge up close to nature and feeling as individuals and as, as a society very peculiar about this. You know, it's like going back to your rape victim and pleading for their forgiveness. And yet, as I've tried to make sense of these psychedelic experiences, first in a general way, saying, you know, what are these molecules for? Or is that a proper question to ask? What are they doing for the plant? What are they doing for me? Uh, as I've tried to come to terms with what this might all be about, I've come more and more back to the notion that uh, it all lies in the plants, that our peculiar restlessness, which in modern circumstances has evolved into a rapacious appetite for addictive substances of all sorts. Our peculiar um, inappropriateness in all contexts, so we are not quite simply complex mammals, we are certainly not angels, and we just seem to occupy a very uncomfortable place in the hierarchy of, of uh, creation. I think this has to do with the fact that we are uh, the, the traumatized inheritors of a dysfunctional relationship, a relationship that grew dysfunctional uh, in the last 15 to 25,000 years. And what we call history is the fall out of a dynamic, here and now, feeling-toned relationship with our environment and into, you know, this wor anticipation of the future, worry of the, about the past, uh, basically ego. And I, I recently spoke in New York, and New York is a very uh, nuts and bolts kind of town. And uh, people there took issue with the notion that all of our problems can be boiled down to a single problem. If you trace the, the thread of every screw-up back into the maze, it all comes back to a single issue, which is excess of ego. We all have excess of ego. And uh, our entire 
situation, legalistic, psychological, religious, everything is about this, that it, it doesn't work, it's maladaptive, and yet we have it. And uh, why do we have it if it's maladaptive? If it doesn't promote human values, then how in the hell did it get started and what is it that's maintaining and sustaining it? Well, this is what I want to talk about uh, over the course of the weekend. Uh, when I pushed the analysis of what the psychedelic experience meant to the limits, I was surprised to discover that it left the domain of my personal relationship to the mystery. You know, what is it? What does it want for me? What is it trying to say? It, all that had to also make room for uh, another issue, which is there's a political issue here. I think most people in this room, most people who have had the psychedelic experience will agree that the most profound, the most open-hearted, the most moving moments of their lives, some of them have been tied in with those experiences. But we seem unable or unwilling or afraid to extrapolate that conclusion to the notion that this is a general panacea for society because we cannot conceive that our... Uh, that the, the solution to a spiritual dilemma could lie in matter. In other words, we ourselves have been effect, infected by the inside-outside matter-spirit dichotomies of the, of the dominator culture. But the notion that man, notice the gender thrust here, the notion that man could somehow bootstrap himself to Godhead without reference to nature seems to me highly peculiar and, and simply nothing more than an expression of hubris, pride, a belief, you know, that we can do it our way and alone. 